Ciao a tutti! Today we will talk about how to make non-metallic metal gold in a believable way. Remember to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. And let's go! Today we are going to paint this model, it's the 38mm version of Asteria from the Tenebre line of camera models. So, okay, here's the model and let's start. I will prime it black. Okay, as you can see I primed the model black and it's uh, matte because I wanted to to avoid the problems discussed in the frosting video. It is uh, Chimera Black plus um, the Molotov Black that is glossy. So the combination of the two gave a matte result. And from here I will start painting the base coats. It's going to be a little bit boring, the base coats, but hey. I'll do most of it out of cam. I'll just show the beginning of it. Here you you have a brown that is the royal brown, but whatever brown you want is fine. There is black on the palette. There is the honeymoon yellow, but any other ochre color will work. So for example, yellow oxide. And then I put a little bit of a green color that is the turquoise phthalo from Golden, but um, phthalo green would have been nice too. And whatever, whatever you like in the end is a, a blue or any cold color. This cold color will be used on the lower part of the model to emulate a little bit reflection from the ground and the rest will be used in the upper part of the model as a base coat. So let's go! So to keep my initial palette limited I will use this phthalo turquoise probably together with a little bit of the ochre and black to get a this petrol, petrol like green and use it as a base coat for the clothing. I think I will keep the cloth a little bit on the turquoise. It is a good good color to contrast the, the gold and it is um, it is not not as usual as the um, as the purples or the or the blues as a contrast. So it's a, it's a little bit warmer, let's say. And I think it will be a nice, a nice touch, but things can change. So let's not ever be too fond of something you are doing because you may end up wanting to, to change it in the future. So, okay, this is what I will do, doing the, the base coat, I'll do it off cam and then we'll see the results in a, in a bit. Okay, this is the palette I'm going to use for the gold, no metallic metal. The, um, the colors are the royal brown, black, if you can see it. Then I use the kiwi brown from the cartacci set orange, cold yellow, white, and the satin medium. Mm, this color, the kiwi brown, you can obtain it through other means by mixing. So for example, you can use the um, yellow oxide, a little bit of black, a little bit of red oxide, and a little bit of white and see if you can obtain this khaki color. This is very convenient because there are many colors mixed in this to, to work. The reason why this color works it is because it's a desaturated ochre color, a little bit greenish for the gold, that you can always saturate a little bit more if needed with orange. 
And then while going into the progression of lighter color by adding white, you will add a little bit of cold yellow to, to obtain a saturated light color for the gold. But this desaturated ochre base is very useful. This is coldish, but you can always make it warmer by adding a little bit of orange. Or eventually, if you prefer, you can use the golden brown. That is another very good color for gold. Or make your own mixes. This is a matter of preference, so don't worry. But the important part is that this color that is for the first the first light that we will be making is going to be a little bit on the desaturated side because otherwise gold will look a little strange, a little too garish and it's better to, to avoid it because gold is not yellow, you know. So you, you really need to look at mm, several references to understand. Gold is not yellow, but it has a warm undertone usually and it's very shiny. So to avoid making it feel like yellow, you need a little bit of desaturation. Okay, I hope, I hope this helps and let's start painting. Okay, I start out by mixing royal brown, kiwi brown, black and satin medium to create the warm undertone I was talking about. And by doing this, I start to sketch the, the lights on the model over the, the base I prepared before with black and brown, mainly. As you can see, I'm covering a big portion of the, of the model, and it is to create the first layer. This is not a light yet, it is a, a, almost a shadow, let's say, yet, because I start from dark and I go towards the light. I leave some parts with the previous color so that you can still see some deeper shadows that I will make deeper later. And then I'll, I'll cover almost all the rest. I try not to be very geometrical with it. So as you can see, my brush stroke is very loose and the shapes are not geometrical at all. This is to emulate the behavior of the light to make it more natural. I'm going also on the edges with this and I leave a little space between one plate and the next so that there is a little shadow still, still present that I will make deeper later. And I start to sketch also the legs but this is useful to do at the very last because they need less color and less contrast. So it's very useful not to overdo the legs, at least not yet. Then I'll pick up some kiwi brown with satin medium to start to do the first lights. And I will keep going just as before by covering the the lights that I that I want to show as more contrasted. And as you can see I also do a little rim light between one plate and the next to simulate some reflection even in the lower part. An important part about painting non-metallic metal is to paint inside the edges, not just edge highlight. Because if you only do edge highlight, it's very toy-like as a, as a feeling. So you have to paint inside too, and to create some lights and some shapes. And not only on the upper part, but you also need some reflections on the lower part to, to emulate the behavior of the, of the metal. I also keep the, a little bit of the previous part showing up so that you can still see that warm undertone that is very typical of gold. I will leave the legs almost untouched yet and I will do it at the very last. 
the color is a bit transparent as you can see thanks to the satin medium and I'm covering also the edges because edges in a metal it's the most reflective part in it Yes, <laughs> finishing up some edges, and then I pick up a Perilene Violet from Windsor & Newton and mix it with black. This is a very shiny color. You can use other colors, but it is important that this shine. This is a purplish tone that I like because it's very contrasted with the yellow, of course. But you can use a violet or whatever you feel like, a very dark brown, a very dark red mixed with black. The important part is that it is glossy because the deepest shadows are more visible when they are glossy. So do not do matte, very matte shadows. It doesn't work too much, at least in my opinion. And with this, I am creating dark lining between the various plates to make everything pop a little bit more, as you can see. Then I start to create a light with Kiwi Brown, white, called yellow, orange, quite a bit of orange because I need it to be saturated, this light. And then I prepare a second light with the previous mix with more white and a lot more yellow. So it is a saturated light again. And then with these two colors, I start to sketch again highlights on the, on the model. And sometimes I also go back and pick up the previous mixes that I created to um, blend a little bit these lights. But it is important to have a, a, a big contrast between each light, a big jump. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like metal because metal with big reflections need a lot of contrast. And if you are too blended, it doesn't feel like metal anymore because metal creates sharp reflections. It's not a, um, a fabric. As you can see, I'm creating reflection inside the plates, not only on the edges. And I keep going and increasing the contrast, being careful to leave some some of the previous color showing in some parts. Otherwise, if you lose the mid-tones, it doesn't work anymore, the effect. So try not to lose the mid-tones. Very, very important. And I keep going, increasing the contrast on the edges and on the points of light that I decided to be sparkling. How do you decide these points? Well, you have to choose a direction of the light and try to imagine where it will lead to create this strong reflection point. This is a thing that will come with experience, but you can also try to visualize it by looking at an angle with your with the model and seeing what are the perpendicular points from your eyes to the to the armor of the model at that point like your eyes would be a source of light and at this point you can guess a little bit better where to put them i also create some reflection points also in uh, some lower parts and I try to connect the lights on the chest piece for example as you can see they are very there are two big points near to each other to create a longer reflection try to connect the light and move when you paint from one place to the next keeping the light spots in the same line from one point to the next in the armor so it feels coherent. As you can see, with the contrast, the, the armor looks more and more like metal. It lacks a little bit of tone right now, but this is not too important because we can increase it later. 
So don't be don't be scared if you see that the color are not working too much. Contrast is way more important at this point. And now uh, to increase the color, this are glaze of orange, very diluted, and I put it in the mid tones and in the shadows. This is to make the, um, the shadows warmer. I think I will do at the end also on the on the gown. But for now I increase the, the warmth undertone of the gold in the mid-tones that I lost a little bit and in the shadows. And now I will increase the last lights with just yellow and white. So big jumping contrast to, to create the, the strongest reflections point. Because with the glaze, you, you also lose a little bit. But this jump will make the, the model pop way more. As you can see, I go in the spots that I created before with the other colors and increase the contrast more. Now it's starting to look like good wood metal. It's still not yet there. This last this last passage is very important. As you can see, I also create some micro dots in the various lines. I try not to just highlight the whole line, but I create little dots to differentiate a, a little bit the, um, how the light behaves, creating irregularities. Mm, try always not to be geometrical. Being geometrical is the death of non-metallic metal. Try to be very chaotic but consistent in the lights. And this is a trick, a big trick, that is the green gold from Liquitex. This color is like magic. And it's a green, but it's also very yellow, it's very glossy, and with a glaze with it on the lights this time will transform the saturation of the lights, creating a really a very powerful gold effect. And before this, I also increased the shadows with the with the perilene violet mix, so it is stronger the contrast. But as you can see, this color is changing the the feeling of the gold and the, the saturation. This is very good. It's a very good trick. It's my secret. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> have fun with it. And I also increase the saturation on shadows again to, to have more contrast between this green, yellow, and this orange, a bit warm and cold contrast. And then since I glazed on the lights, I will also need to recover a little bit the lights with the white and yellow I did before. As you can see, I'm increasing the lights once again because I lost a little bit of the effect. So now, now it's going back with full strength and there is a little bit of nuances. I'm remixing the white and yellow because I finished it and now I'm doing the last spots. Okay, as you can see I proceeded off cam to finish painting the gold, both in the legs and in the back of the model. Uh, as you can see, the legs are darker and they, and they go from this lighter part with a slightly green tinted color towards a, an orange. So there is a shift in temperature going down and it's darker. This is to concentrate the attention in this upper part that is more luminous, more yellow, and so it, it also feels warmer in a way. Um, 
because the um, the orange is a colder color compared to to yellow so this part is a little bit colder and it goes up to create a tension here this is very important to give volume to the figure and now i will proceed to to paint the other parts because this is a strange stage in which some things are completed some others are not and you don't have a feeling of what the model needs yet so this is crucial at this point you need to paint all the rest of the parts bring them to the same level of completeness and then assess what you need to do to the non-metallic metal if you need more contrast if you need more refinement if you need other things right now it's very difficult to judge so i'll go ahead and paint these other parts and then we can judge if everything is ready or if it needs more work okay i kept painting of cam a little bit to to put everything under a, a better level of completion but i want to show you the palette I kept painting the rest of the model always using the same colors, mixing and remixing all of them. In this way, you will always have a balanced composition, you know, instead of putting more paints from the bottles on the, on the palette. This is where the model is right now. And I will now paint the non-metallic metal mm, silver or steel in the parts that are missing and then we should be finished well base aside okay i'm creating a gray with black brown and white to to create the non-metallic metal effect I prefer to use brown in this case over blues or other colors to match a little bit with the gold that is based on browns. I'm adding more white to create more highlights. I'm highlighting the edges, keeping the, the light movement I created on the plates. I'm adding more white and a little bit of yellow to tint the color of the light to match the color of the gold light. And then I'm increasing contrast on the on the same spot I used in the in the gold armor. And then I'm deepening the shadows with the shadow color I used for the gold armor, the periwinkle violet plus black. And I keep going, increasing the white and adding reflection point here and there to to create uh, the effect of non-metallic metal, as you can see. And with this, I keep going back and forth until I reach the desired effect. It's not different at all from what I did with the gold, only I'm doing it with these browns, very saturated to be gray, but not without color. And this is important. Metal has color, it's not just black and white. It will feel very old if you only do with black and white. As you can see, I created dots and try not to be symmetrical at all. Very important not to be symmetrical. Then I'm creating all the other, all the other parts, the buckles, the sword, and I, and I am creating the effect. In this case, the non-metallic metal silver is simple, simpler at least than the armor because it's not too important in the scheme of the of the model. Always try to be effective in what you do. Put in the most effort where it matters the most in the model. And in this case the the sword and the buckles are not as important as the, as the armor. This is why I will not give the same extent of attention. And also, after I finish this, I will increase the amount of nuances a little bit everywhere on the model of CAM to, to put some warm shadows also on the clothing, for example, with some reds and putting some weathering 
in various parts to, to make it more appealing. And then I will also create a base for, but this I will, I will do off cam because it's beyond the scope of this video. And finishing up some non-metallic metal parts on the shoulder with more light because it's upper in the model. So it needs more light to be more visible. And then I will complete the model of cam. That's it for today, but before leaving you to the gallery of the finished piece, I want to remind you that this Free tutorials are made possible by the paid in-depth masterclasses on the pegasoworld.com website. If you are interested in them, check the info down below, you will find the link and I assure you they are well worth it. Okay, that's it for now. See you on the next video. Bye!